Okay, so here we are. Um, here's the the unit with the rain cover on it. Um, unfortunately, I haven't even gotten it moved into my garage yet um, because I don't have the four to eight people available to lift it that the military recommends having. It weighs about 370 pounds, um, so and it does not have any wheels on it, so it is not something to just kind of move around with one person. And if you'll excuse me for just a minute, I'm going to take this cover off. Okay, so here's here's what I was telling you about. Um, four persons to move, eight persons to lift onto vehicle. Okay, so um, two basic sides, you know, on the right there you have your burner. And on the left, you have your engine and water pump. Um, the engine is a strange um, choice. It's a two-stroke engine. Um, I believe they make, I don't even, I'm not even going to uh, attempt to pronounce that, but I believe they make snowmobile engines. Um, and uh, carburetor, you know, you've got your throttle level, lever here, uh, choke here. And it even has the uh, what they call the tickler, which um, basically just holds the float. There it is. Tickler holds the float down on the carburetor, so the engine um, floods with fuel as a way to prime it. Look at that; it's got a high-performance K and N air filter on it. Um, I don't know why they chose to go gasoline on this model, even with the burner. Most of the military equipment I've been around has been everything they've made an effort to make diesel for obviously I would guess for safety purposes and so they don't have to have as many different kinds of fuel on hand um, the engines two-stroke it mixes um, one pint per five gallons I believe which don't quote me on that but I think that comes out to 40 to 1 if you do the math um, this slides out right here and I'll have to grab one of the fuel tank. this is where the fuel tank goes for the engine and then your hookups for your fuel tank are down here and that just threads onto the, the plastic tank that it comes with. Um, over on this side, if you reach down in here and open this compartment, which may be difficult to do with one hand, okay. This is where your fuel hookup is for your um, for your burner, and your burner fuel tank hangs from this hook right here on the side. Um, and you can see it still says that the, the fuel system has still been preserved. Do not crank till you're ready to use. Um, so it's it's never been used, um, even though this particular model does have. Um, indicates three hours on the hour meter rather than just the, like one and a half which is what most of them have um, so you got your basic instructions like I said here these instructions are very very basic maybe just a refresher um, so you would you would fire up the engine you would unhave your your wands unhooked um, then idle it down it's got a centrifugal clutch the, the pump will stop once you get your engine running then put your wands back on, fire up the pressure. You got your um, water pressure, your water temperature, and Celsius. Or I'm sorry, that's your fuel pressure, water temperature, water pressure. This is a burner valve. It's supposed to regulate the temperature. Um, this is your mode selection switch right here, which is goes between wands and showers. Um, they According to the specifications, it'll make water that is um, 90 degrees, a maximum of 90 degrees for showers, and a maximum of 250 degrees for wands. But then if you want it to be lower, you can mess with the burner valve and adjust your temperature with that if you want it to be lower than the maximum. So also down towards the bottom there, that's your water uh, inlet, and this is your pressurized water outlet right there. Um, 
the exhaust comes from the engine up into the top of the burner and then everything gets exhausted out these ports here which are they covered with tape which is probably a good thing um, that's just the control panel there um, some ignition parts um, it's got a, a belt driven fuel pump and the belt driven water pump is down there on the bottom and the fuel pump runs full time so it's not designed to run just as a cold water unit it's designed only to run if you have the burner on as well even if you, you can cut it way down but you can't turn it completely off these are some of your flow valves here um, thermo thermostat uh, you can kind of see the water pump back there I guess I should have taken some of the covers off so you could have seen it better um, it's got these built on handles here um, to help carry it with you basically need uh, pole bearers to move this thing um, this is the emergency overflow pipe there um, that's basically it one other thing of uh, issue with these is the input water it's designed to suck water out of the um, it's designed to suck water from a, a standing source it's not designed to be hooked up to a garden hose I've read stories of some people having some major problems when they tried to run it off of a garden hose um, you really need to have it hooked up to I'm gonna walk over here to the inside of the garage you need to have it hooked up to a water source um, it, it can either it says in the manual you know you can even suck it out of a pond out of a uh, river or even out of just the the tank but if you're going to use it at home you don't want that big 3,000 gallon tank um, I would recommend you would just get like a 55 gallon drum uh, cut the top off like a plastic one and then just um, cut the top off put one maybe even two garden hoses into that drum and then you can monitor your water level and stop if you need to to let the hoses fill that drum back up I would not recommend making an adapter to use it with a garden hose because the pump is in the manual it states the pump is an oversized pump and it, it takes in more water than it needs and then what it doesn't need it recirculates back around to the pump and you go putting pressure on the other end you're probably going to mess with that process and could cause some serious issues so this is the accessory kit and it was so heavy to unload it by myself, I had to take all, everything out and then put it back in so I didn't get it back in there perfectly. Um, but it, it comes in a pretty good size uh, uh, tote here. And these are the, the wands here. And they're nice looking um, made in USA wands. I, I don't exactly know that kind of tip, but from what I was reading, that's not really the steam tip. Uh, they're they're nice because they they protect your um, your hands from the the heat. Um, this is a float if you can inflate, and you can use it to um, suck water out of a lake or something without the without the screen going clear to the bottom. This is a tool kit right here. I haven't even opened that up yet. That's got some different tools in it supposedly. Um, the metal pipes that you see kind of in the background there these are the shower accessories um, let's get them out of the way here um, and the, the, the two big black hoses are your main um, wand hoses I don't know why they're, they're really big I, I guess it's because of the hotter water um, this piece right here this is the piece that hooks on to This is the piece that hooks onto the output um, right there, and it comes over here. And this is actually a strainer. It actually strains the water after it's pumped so it doesn't clog up the nozzles. And then you have a splitter on this end of the strainer, so you can hook up both, either you can hook up both wands at the same time. Sorry, old friend had to go in and delete some video or some old pictures. Anyhow, this is the strainer. You can hook up either two wands or one wand and the soap mixing device, which is what you see down in the bottom there. It's kind of a weird gizmo. Um, this is the large suction uh, apparatus. This is a big, it's got a pretty 
large size hose on there. Um, and it's got a, a nice looking um, screen there with the larger screen and then the finer screen uh, underneath. So that's designed to go into your water source, whether it be a um, whether it be a um, tank or a pond or a stream or whatever. And then you have a um, air pump over there to pump up that bladder that I was talking about earlier. So in review, um, what you have is a uh, basically a steam cleaner that's not really super powerful. Um, that's uh, one good thing. It's probably be it'd probably be great for washing cars because you know you, you can actually damage a car washing it with a pressure washer. Um, but then you have to decide you know if it's worth lugging around this giant thing every time you want to wash a car and or if you wash a bunch of cars in one place you know you have to decide whether it's um, you want to listen to the thing and smell fumes all day long while you're washing cars so um, I could see it being uh, very uh, good for um, emergency shower purposes um, uh, if you have a if you set it to the shower mode, um, which sets it at 90 degrees or less, um, you know, you could you could use it, um, or you set on the other mode and drop the weight down, you could use it to power probably a lot of showers um, because it's pretty high volume pump um, or maybe like a long-term camping situation. Um, of course, it wouldn't make a good storage water heater, but for something that you need it right away, I would say if you're going to do something like that, I would make sure there's some kind of a, some kind of a, a safety to prevent any type of scalding in case the thing would go haywire. You wouldn't want it to be able to put out um, 250 degree water in a shower head. So I think they have different kinds of um, valves that would shut off the water if it reached that temperature. Um, other than those two uses, you know, I mean. Um, uh, I guess you could part it out. Um, there's a lot of good, high-quality parts on there. I kind of hate the idea of tearing apart a perfectly good piece of equipment. Um, but, you know, who, who knows how many of these things they're going to be selling. And um, there's only so many people that are going to buy them as is, as complete units. Um, one of the other negatives um, on the unit is the manual says if the burner has a two-stage burner with two injectors and one, one fires... Um, all the time and the other one kicks on if it needs to be warmer and uh, the thing if they're actually both of them running constantly which is not going to happen necessarily but if they're both running constantly the, the manual says that it can burn through the entire five gallons of fuel in half an hour and um, he said it's designed to run on gasoline it can run on other fuels the burner um, but if it's below 80 degrees and you're trying to run it off kerosene or diesel, um, it, it could be hard to start, it says. But it also says that um, you can mix diesel, kerosene, and gasoline together. I would maybe try like a 50-50 blend of gasoline and diesel because theoretically the diesel should put out, should put out more energy and raise the heat more without burning as much fuel. So um, something to try. Um, I'm going to be selling uh, right off the bat the 3,000 gallon collapsible tank, uh, trying to get $1,000 out of that if anybody's interested. Uh, I'm going to be selling the um, brand new water pump, trying to get $1,000 out of that. It's a 65 gallon per minute, um, I think it's like a Lom Lombardini diesel engine or something like that. Um, trying to get $1,000 out of that and um, of course unless, you know, um, the other good use for the unit would be just to use it for what it's meant for, for decontamination. But I don't know who, who all uh, is going to need something like that. Um, but if I could get, say, $2,200 out of the whole setup, I'd probably sell the whole thing. Um, but anyhow, hopefully, um, if you're looking to buy one of these units um, straight from the government or from a private party, um, you can kind of have some more insight onto what you can actually do with one and what they actually are and how they work. So... I know I've found a lot of information that I needed uh, that way on YouTube, so hopefully I can contribute a little bit. Okay, thanks. Bye.